Hey road trippers, the hoop season is in full swing. Are you using the sleeper app for daily fantasy basketball? We are. You watch and listen to the podcast and Rich and Channing have made their sleeper picks of the week. So get some skin in the game and start playing fantasy basketball on the sleeper app. Turn your basketball knowledge into real money with the sleeper app. It's the ultimate fantasy sports app that can turn game day into payday. Just download the sleeper app and pick more or less on your favorite players. With more stats than any other fantasy app, just choose two or more of your favorite players from either pregame or live. It's as easy as that. Again, pick more or less from the predicted stats and you can win up to 100 times your money if your picks win. Download and sign up on the Sleeper app today. Use our promo code ROADTRIPPIN and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Sleeper is currently operational in over 25 states. Check out Sleeper today. Welcome into another edition of Road Trippin'. I'm Allie Clifton alongside world champs Richard Jefferson and Channing Fry. This is a special year-end best of edition of the podcast. So let's dive in to our best topics of the year, starting with a contentious debate between the guys regarding Nikola Jokic and Giannis Antetokounmpo. I mean, he is by far the best player on the planet. It's almost not even close. Who? Giannis? Jokic. No, he's, Jokic. you're wrong. No, 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 Jokic is not the best player on the what? Dive in, dive in, and I want Channing to go first. Are you? There is no other player in the NBA that is top five in every statistical category. Blocks and there's and no other players that makes blocks his steals? team. What you block, say? Blocks and steals often are, are categories. Or are you just saying offensively? Uh, I would say offensively. So like rebounds, okay. assists, and and yeah, yeah, yeah. points. Continue. There's no other player that makes his team that much better. Okay. It, it just in all facets of the game. His skill set is the the most is the cleanest skill set in the NBA beautiful. at it's an elite beautiful. level. It's beautiful. it's beautiful. At his size, he can for a guy to get five shots, not complain about his shots and dominate a game. There's no other player that he can gets, just he gets pick his shot. He gets to pick his shots. Yeah, but think about this. Most players, if we were going to say an MVP, the, his five-shot game was more impressive to me because I watched the whole game of how he do, he dominated the game by just going, oh, y'all want me to pass now? Here you go. Bloop, 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 bloop. And just played the game the right way. There was no, oh, I I need to score more to help. Like, I want to get my points up. He was like, oh, y'all give me this? I'll take that. Y'all want to give me this? I'll take that. That, to me, is a sign of d- wild dominance that I don't know I've seen. You, you can't name me a time where uh, Giannis or uh, KD or uh, uh, Jason Tatum would take five shots and be able to dominate a game. That's well, that's fair. That like, But what I'm saying is that that unique yeah. ability, just because someone has that – doesn't mean now I really quickly I'm gonna and again just to we're gonna look I want to look at uh Giannis's last few games um yep. like he had their comparisons are insane 44 and 22 50 43 and 20 55 10 and 7 30 mm-hmm. 21 and 10 right now last game he was terrible three of 10 seven points I feel like our guy's getting a little tired but had 18 rebounds and 10 assists so Sorry. now when we start looking at his assist, now this is my thing. Everything that you said about, about Jokic is 100% true. Right. But we're talking about the best basketball player on the planet, the most yes. dominant player on the planet, right? Giannis is not as impressive offensively, even though it's close, but defensively what Giannis also brings to the true. table is not even remotely close. Totally. That's not that is true. It. That's not to say that Jokic is a bad defender. I'm not saying that, people. What he's I'm not on Giannis's he's level. A, he's an average defender, a average to slightly above average because of his IQ. Like, you're not going to just be able to target him. But at no point in time will he ever dominate a game defensively. Giannis dominates games defensively, and he is on par offensively with Jokic, even though I would give Jokic the edge because of the things that he does. So using that, I'm going to ask you this one more question. Who is the best basketball player on the planet? Jokic. You're out of your fucking mind. That's not even mathing. Put 
put put Jokic on the 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 amount of you can you don't even need plays when you have Jokic. You have to have a specific team to play with Giannis. Now this is we're not knocking we we are breaking straws, right? Little straws or whatever that term is. The game of basketball is two sides, Channing. You're seven, two seven, sides. Seven, 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 to that point, Rich, you asked Channing about stocks and stocks, steals and blocks. Stockton. Stocks, steals, and blocks, right? right? Jokic has. What does he have? On Tell him season, out. 54 steals. Yeah. To Giannis's 28. That's it. To, to Giannis's 28. Now, this shit is weak. That's Giannis why. edges the Joker by 10 in blocks. Mm-hmm. Because he's playing Re- with Aaron Gordon. Rebounds. Giannis has one more. Assists. Oh. It's damn near triple. For Jokic, 368 to 187. Um, Though a completely, I mean, when it comes to field goals, attempted, Giannis is attempted 729 to 578 for Jokic. Jokic has obviously a 62% rate to a 52%. You talk about usage there. Um, Jokic, eight threes more. That's it? Made. No, it can't be eight. With less attempts. Wait, 33 wait. of 88 to 25 of 102 for Giannis. Really? Yeah, Jokic doesn't shoot a lot of threes. They're just all he doesn't shoot a lot of threes. Yeah, I'm just giving you some comparisons. Here's my question then for the both of you, because at the end of the day, when you talk about best player on the planet, that obviously translates to winning, right? Yeah. yeah. If you were to have a seven-game series, who, who, are you, who would you want? Ooh, in a seven game healthy. series. Milwaukee is healthy. Milwaukee would motherfucking whoop Denver's tail. <laughs> what? If Milwaukee was healthy. No, you're out of your mind, if, bro. If if was a fifth and we all be drunk, listen. <laughs> ain't no no, are, they're not healthy. What, what I'm they're, saying they're, is you said they're not healthy. Team, you said, but they have the same record. They have the same record. And we're gonna okay, fair. Not, and you've got Denver and Milwaukee in these teams. We saw what happened in Milwaukee saying, last year. We saw what happened. You get to create you get Seven to create games. a team around these two individuals. Yeah. Who do you want? Who are you want, who are you dude, picking? That's a they're, hard choice, Allie. You no, can't go yeah, wrong. About, I'm, taking Jokic. I'm taking Jokic. I'm yeah. taking Jokic. I would we for Channing and I, like so we had a, a thing. We were like, who is who is who is the most fun player to watch between the two? Hypothetically. Oh, if you're a fan, it's Giannis, right? Who is the best playmaker of the two? It's Jokic. Oh. Who is the person that you would want to play with the most? Oh, it's Jokic. 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 But yeah, like that's not a disrespect. It's like, do you, right. you know, do you want to play with LeBron or do you want to play with Kobe? Well, LeBron's gonna pass him the ball. Fuck a ton more. <laughs> and like oh, then Kobe He's is take five shots in a game. A yeah, two time MVP that's, takes that's five shots. So, so, I don't I don't describe someone's dominance by do you want to play with them? Right. Like that's that's do you want a snowman? I didn't, who, I didn't ask who you wanted to play with. I'm saying who are you taking? I am taking as I a GM. Taking, because this is for my I thing. would take I, Jokic because I could put anybody with him. Here's on the why offensive end, on the offensive end, you can put anybody with him and you will make them better. Defensively, there's a reason why he's needed. And again, every player needs something. I just think that defensively, you will have if you build around Giannis, it is much easier to build a top five, top ten defense. And around him, it is much easier because he's very similar to Braun and he's a willing passer, gets multiple triple doubles, that it's easy to have a dominant player on the defensive end, on the offensive end, that is also a very, very willing passer for a superstar. Now, for everyone listening, I absolutely yuv, love Giannis. Yuv, yuv. So yuv. we are <laughs> yuv? What's yuv? A yuv, a yuv. yuv. Yeah, yeah, Yav. So don't think that I am. We are bashing either one. I took a stance. You, 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 (laughs) I am not bashing him. I would, if you gave me Giannis, I would be happy. We are, we are slicing up jokes. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) To me, it is easier to find defensive players that I can that Jokic can make better, rather than finding offensive players that need to be good defensively. Like Giannis didn't win until they surrounded him with Drew Holiday, uh, Bobby Portis, you know, big, big Lopez. Uh, yeah, well, Jamal all, Murray's like, an all-star, all-star player. He's also got uh, Aaron Gordon. Jamal Murray is actually not an all-star, by the way. No, but I'm saying he's an all-star caliber player before he. Well, obviously a- not. No, he's not. 
Okay. He's never been an All Star, so he's not an All Star caliber fuck. player, Richard. That's this fuck. No, come on, don't do that. Don't, don't, don't just disagree. Just be a dick. I, I'm not disagreeing. It doesn't Jamal make Murray, sense. Jamal Murray went to the conference All-Star caliber Jamal, player too. Jamal, 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 Murray, too. Jamal Murray, Jamal Murray went to went to the bubble and was getting 50 balls and led a team to the conference finals before. That doesn't mean looking, okay. So, so did T.J. Warren. Is he an All Star player? So did T.J. Warren. T.J. So Warren, TJ Warren. The conference finals in the bubble. Best player in the bubble. Is second best player in the bubble. Like okay, really. T.J. Warren at fifty. Let's unpack. Now, okay, T.J. Now Warren. I'm arguing. I'm arguing. Now you're arguing. Let's unpack it. Uh, if I'm you saying. put if you put a jalapeno and a habanero in a skillet, yeah, <laughs> this is I'm where saying. we are right now. <laughs> Jamal Murray. Jamal Murray. He is a all star caliber Hall, player. The Drew Hall- Holiday like type player. I, I'm saying this <laughs> when Jamal Murray. Bitch, you're, Jamal Murray missed an entire <laughs> season because of an ACL. Jamal Murray had Jamal Murray points. and Drew Holiday are not comparable, big guy. I'm just, if Jamal Murray at his peak, he is still recovering from a knee injury. This is he's 30 games into a season. Prior okay. to this, if we are referencing Jamal Murray's ascension from a top 10 pick to a 18 point a game score. Their team went to the postseason every year. He starts going for 50 points in the bubble. And then he they two, three, one comebacks and goes to the conference finals as the second best player on a team. Right. We let's not and Jokic was not MVP Jokic yet. So that meant totally. Jamal Murray had more responsibility. So if I'm gonna say that Jamal Murray by the end of this season or next season is a Drew Holiday quality player, that's true. Right. Aaron Gordon, what he is doing, top 10 pick, everyone knows, gets out of Orlando and every year has been ascending, right? Every year he's got better, especially with Jokic. That's all I'm saying. We can't say that Jokic has nobody and they had to go get Drew and then Chris Middleton. Yes, every player needs somebody. Let's not say like Jokic has no, and they got Michael Porter Jr. also, who's a six foot 10 fucking ratchet. Like, what they does got ratchet mean, Richard? A ratchet, that man, that man, the Duke, and he'd be shooting that thing. He shoots like you. No, no, no. Shit, my shit was absolute flamethrower. It's is medium lighter right now. Ooh, I'm joking. I'm joking, Michael Porter. That was a fun job. conversation. What? I still don't know if we figured out who is the better player it's, in the world. It's, it's <laughs> the best player in the world is, is, it's, is Jokic. Jokic is about to be a three-time MVP if he maintains this season, but oh. he's not the best player in the world. He's not that the best. That doesn't make any sense. Right. Well. All right, Rich. Show your sleeper picks of the week. Give the audience two players you think are primed to go off this week and score more than their sleeper app projections. Look, look, I don't know if people saw, but Anthony Davis, he talked about wanting to, you know, kind of set his mark. It's his hometown, you know. So I think Anthony Davis, I think he's looking to have a big game in Chicago. I think his teammates want him to have a big game in Chicago. So I think that he's going to get he's going Fun to get supply. AD, he also said last night his first five years in the league, he never played in Chicago because he said he was either sick or injured. How about that's a, that? That's, so that's a going tough in one. Healthy, which is nice. That's a t- oh, I lost my first like 12 games in Phoenix ever. Right. <laughs> yeah. Cause I was in the Western conference. It was whatever I was in the Eastern conference, but he's the player that I would say would go above his average. Okay. That's one. Got another and, one. And then the next player that I think is going to go above his average. Now, now, now hear me out. I think Anthony Edwards is going to have, <laughs> is going to, no, nah, man, look, sometimes, you know, things happen in your life and basketball is your only escape. And he had a good game last night. I think he's going to continue playing above his average. Not saying, you know, anything, but the Lakers do catch Minnesota on the second night of a back-to-back in Minnesota. That's not fun. No, it's not, but I think he's going to be locked in. Maybe that's one of them. All right, Road Trippin' Sleeper Picks of the Week are sponsored by Sleeper Fantasy. Download the Sleeper app and use the promo code Road Trippin for a deposit match for up to $100. Terms and conditions apply. Let's go. Another huge story in 2023 was the NBA record that fell, and it's now one that will never be broken. Here's our reaction to LeBron James breaking Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's all-time scoring record. Should we start with congratulating um, our friend, guys? Rich, you were the only no. one in the building. <laughs> Allie's so <laughs> mad. A big moment, LeBron uh, James. <laughs> Allie, first of all, I think one, um, yes, I think road tripping needed to be represented. And since I was, I'm not going to even make a joke about being like that because Allie's going <laughs> to get madder. So I, she's going to, she's going to get mad. But no, man, that it was it's still like right I, here I can, in my throat. Yeah. So this is what happened, people. 
So we, all of us are having conversations, our text chain, me, Channing and Allie, everyone's having conversations. Yes, I picked up on that, Channing. Um, we're all having conversations about when's he going to break it, <laughs> stuff like that. And and I remember Kevin, Kevin sends the picture of him walking into the arena in the all black outfit. And I, and somebody was like, y'all better take the over. And I was like, Ooh, I was like, God, 38's a lot. If the game is close and I don't have a lot of faith in the Lakers, obviously they lost. I was like, I don't have a lot of faith. So like if that game is is close and he breaks it in overtime or he breaks it with two minutes to go in the fourth, because that's 38 points is a damn good night for anybody. So I was like, I was like, oh, he's not going to break it. I think he'll break it beginning in Milwaukee. They'll do a little thing, get back to the game. Cool. So I'm sitting at home watching this game. I'm sitting at home. And I was like, just let me watch the first quarter and see what the dude does. That boy comes out firing. I don't know, 12 points in the first. I was like, oh, shit, let me let me get dressed. Let me let me figure this out. So I I shave my head. I put on some clothes. I get in the car. I put on my iPad. I'm watching this. I leave my house probably about five minutes before halftime. And he's got 20. I'm like, man, let me speed my ass here. So I park at ESPN. Walk down the tunnel. I get in there and like I, I see Doug. I see our guy Doug. Uh, then I see Farah and I see D Wade. And so I'm talking to Ted from Nike, talking to Lynn, just kind of like I'm talking about as soon as you walk in, everyone is there. Like it's like LeBron sold all, you know, 25,000 tickets or whatever. So you've seen everybody. And I didn't have anywhere to sit. So I'm starting to talk to Ted. The people come back. D Wade and Ferris like, hey, hey, come just come sit here. So next thing I know, 30 minutes prior, I'm sitting in my bed. Now I'm at Staples sitting next to D Wade and Farah watching LeBron. And he's now cooking. It's like he's got six more. And it was like the arena was just anytime somebody shot the ball that wasn't named LeBron James, the whole arena, you could hear it like. Ugh. And this man was just, he was just, I, I, I haven't seen him that possessed. I, I truly, he was possessed like it was a playoff game. He had 38 points in three quarters, right? Like he was locked yeah. in on, on let's go get this. And I, I fault myself for, for doubting him. I, if he would have just told me that he was going to break it, I would have believed him, but he just didn't say anything. But 38 and three quarters to get this done, right? Think about it. And his mind said, oh, I'll get it done. So then the fourth quarter, we can focus on playing basketball. Kudos to him. Shout out. <laughs> yeah. It was cool to watch in my hotel. <laughs> my weak ass hotel. <laughs> my, I just wish you were a better friend and you came to visit. I, I wish you were a better friend and came, Jenny. <clears throat> I wish I was too, Richard. I wish no, I was too. I know. Everybody wishes. But it was amazing play. to watch. Yes. You remember Dude, my, where you were. my kids stayed up. Yep. Oh, wow. I, I remember. I was in a shitty bed in the. That was the one Buckhead thing I, Mary I made my kids stay up. Yeah. My Lauren stayed up, cried for him. Right? Uh-huh. Yeah, I think people who know Braun, like to, to actually get that far, people are like, well, he just had a good career. I'm like, bitch, good career. <laughs> James, like I had a what good is- career. I had a good career. Yeah, I, yeah, stop. You have to be eighteen and average twenty five, not miss a game for twenty years to do what he did, and we're not even including the playoffs. So, like, yeah, he, yeah. Yeah, it, it, like for reference, we will never. And I'm going to say this now: we are never going to see another player, not in our lifetime, anything. Not in our lifetime. Think about how popular Victor Wembayama is, and we just knew about him, the American public, last year. We knew about LeBron when he was 15. Like, And here's what I compare things to. Boxing is indicative to the American public, right? When you have an, uh, an antagonist like Floyd Mayweather, to me, that is the Jordan, that is the Kobe. That is the guy that gets things done, but says, fuck you to the world. I'm going to do things my way. If you like me, you like me. You don't, you don't. And 50% of people like him and 50% of people don't. LeBron is a heavyweight American boxer, right? Where you're like, damn, I got to watch this. This show is, that is the most watched basketball game, I think, in the last how many years? I mean, it doesn't even, like, he is a heavyweight American boxer, uh, like, George Foreman or, 
you know, and, and this is a comparison. People are going to kill me on this. Or like Muhammad Ali, where obviously his, access, his accessibility to the media. You can compare him to Muhammad Ali, bro. You can compare him to Muhammad Ali. To his. You 100% can. Okay. In, in, in this respect, we know things about players. There is no player that is more, uh, I would say, accessible than LeBron. We know everything his kids do. We know everything his wife does. We know everything his family does, his friends. Like, name another athlete that has that much attention on them 24 hours a day. And for him to continually exceed those expectations and keep basketball, the main thing, the main thing, is it in itself should be an award because no one else can handle that. We've seen it. Nobody else can handle that. It's too much. And well, he's the it, only one to do it. Yeah, and Chan, to your point, man, it's so crazy when you you think about it. Like, yes, comparing him to whoever you want in the sports space. Like, I think there's only a few people that that you can't. Like Jackie Robinson, right? Like, let, let, let's let's keep things in perspective. Yeah, okay, Muhammad yeah, yeah. Ali, no, Muhammad Ali, damn right. You know, Tiger Woods, Michael Jordan. Right there, there's you know the Tom Brady's the there. There's only a, a handful of people. I think the part for me that is so Tiger Woods is a good example, though. Go ahead. Tiger Woods is a great example because of we knew Tiger college young, yeah. 15, 16 was balling, went to college, came to the pros, did his thing. But again, at the end of Tiger's career, it started to kind of get a little shaky. You know that incident. LeBron's never had an incident, right? Over 25 years, never had an incident, kept his nose clean, done what he needed to do, and continually wins. Like, Tiger is the greatest golfer of all time, but then it went like this, like everyone's career should be. Where is the dip in LeBron's career? Well, he, he's, he's there, 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 like a paper a, airplane that just keeps going. <laughs> there is a dip. I, I think the craziest thing about LeBron is LeBron, that he's, he uh, Richard, he's it. averaging 30 points. But I'm saying he ha- but I'm saying you can see he's not as athletic. He is not as quick. Like totally. he needs break. Like there's things that we can see to the naked eye if you're just looking at the stats yeah. and the numbers. But that doesn't tell the whole story. It tells a hell of a story, though, because this shit is crazy. Um, but no, I think in the fact that like. Even with social media, I, I I think, you know, because people in that spectrum, you know, live such different lives. But I think the coolest thing that I've seen is people know, like, I score a couple of points, Chan score a couple of points. We're all like, holy shit, that's 40,000 points. But, like, to see, like, D. Wade, who's first ballot Hall of Famer, his boy, to Easy. see guys that, guys that don't fuck with him, and I don't mean this in a disrespectful way, but, like, KG and Paul Pierce, like dudes that Paul compete Pierce. against. Yes, us. when like they he, said that, I when, said when oh, they shit. when they start saying like, man, because they know Paul Pierce averaged twenty points a game for ten seasons, ain't even fucking. Whether you like that. Paul Pierce or not, whether you like KG or not, oh, he was that those dude. Dudes they are fucking dude. bad. That, those yeah. are, they are those dudes. Now, whether you like them or not, when you see Hall of Famers respect, look at that and they're yes. just like, God, bro, like. How man, like, how, like. That's... Let me ask you guys this question: Our guy, obviously, Perk, um, had his tweet and had his thought. What does this do for LeBron's legacy? What does this do for him in terms of that conversation, that one conversation that everyone loves to have, the goat debate? Does this change your thinking? Does it cement him in no. a certain way in your eyes? No, I think I think LeBron James is the best basketball player we've ever seen. Right? Is Jordan the goat? maybe you like again everyone can have their own goat everyone can compare eras like this is why it's like ti- like like Channing just said something about uh Tiger being the greatest golfer uh is it Jack Nicklaus has the most like majors of all time right he has the most majors of all right. time but now let's also keep this in perspective in the 60s 70s when he was doing this the amount of people playing golf was probably far fewer it was probably smaller. It was a smaller pool. When Jordan was with the Bulls and they talked about, you know, the dream team expanding the global game, right? And now there's more people playing. So, like, 
the fact that he has achieved this with a larger pool of competition, a larger pool of growth, that needs to be factored in. Because again, Bill Russell won 11 championships and there's no disrespect to that, but the pool was smaller. So that's why you look at it. Jordan doesn't have the most points. Jordan doesn't have the most championships. Jordan doesn't have the most MVPs. Jordan, like, so I'm not here to say that Jordan wasn't that dude. He is that dude. But I think people just get, oh, well, Bron doesn't have six championships. Well, Jordan doesn't have 11, right? So it's like mm -hmm. we have to be able to, like, mix it all into a pot. And when you mix it in and you say a guy that was never considered, even people that get sensitive, when I said that LeBron's the greatest scorer in this era, and they're like, well, what about Kevin Durant? Kevin Durant is a scorer. <laughs> Their career averages are like 0. 0.2 points away from each other. Like Kevin Garnett, Kev, or Kevin Durant is 27.72. LeBron is 27.51. Like, are you kidding me? And on top of it, LeBron is, is fourth all time in assist. So it's like, that's the greatest basketball player you've ever Ethan seen. Ethan steals. Like, but you know, like, he like you talk about Jokic winning three MVPs because he's averaging. Braun could have averaged a triple double. He could have done that if that was his goal. Like, there's no doubt. He averaged, his career averages are 27, 7, and 7. He's led the league in assists before. So I just don't think we've ever seen a basketball player be able to do whatever they want for as long as they have on the court. You need him to play point guard, you need him to play center, you need him to like, you know, Magic got some of that, but Magic wasn't an elite scorer like that. I've always said, you guys know when you do the um, starting lineups for the Cavs when you played for them, and you'd have to do it for yeah. the radio side, and you're like, I'm Channing Fry center. <laughs> yeah. One night I was like in the back, and and I heard that over the, like the intercom thing from the radio side, and it was like LeBron James every position. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> he, he, is, really wow. yeah, he, he really just said that. He really just said that. A great quote, like uh, like Jordan is the best ever. LeBron is the greatest ever. Like Jordan was the best for his time, for that time. Jordan was the best in that small window, right? For those, I'm going to say eight, I'm going to give him eight years. It was so polarizing. Eight years. <laughs> it was monstrous. Though. It was, it was a stretch. Greatness in, it, it, dude, again, when I say Jordan and Braun are 1A, 1B, it's, it's, if you just don't, if you can't agree with me on that, then you just don't like LeBron. That's just it, right? Yeah. And I'm a firm believer. You know, I said the trolling thing, all Jordan did was score. But literally, I go, how are you the greatest if you don't, if you aren't number one at anything, right? But Jordan is number one all-time career average scoring, right? I think it's 30 no. point something, which is crazy to think. Yeah, I think he is. Yeah, I think he is. Yeah, I think he is. But I'm saying if you're not number one at something, at multiple things, if you're not top five at multiple things, how are you the greatest at something? You may have been the best at what you did, but how are you the greatest? He, right he has six years. Am I a Jordan he has lover? Six year stretch, though. Oh my God, Ali. It's, it's, I know you. That's the Allie, best six year Allie, stretch. Allie, you'll never like that stretch. Six what? year stretch. It, Can I it, ask you guys this? You. How long did Michael Jordan play? How many seasons did Michael Jordan? Twenty play? years. At this point, where does that? Because from now on, LeBron's going to just continue to rise, and he's going to. Because I think when it's all said and done, he'll probably be number two in assists. Right? Like he'll be at the top of because. But that's a credit to him, right? I'm not disrespecting, Ooh. but. Do you factor in that at all when you have these conversations about just in general being at the top of statistical category after yeah, statistical category? JJ Redick, right? No one is ever going to go six and zero in the finals. No, no. Right? It, it just yeah. you you got to respect the shit out of what Jordan yeah. did. He put Even the NBA Brady on his back that the and Bowl. created fifty other players. Everyone is always. Baby Jordan. Remember Harold Minor? Or it's like Whoa. Grant Hill's the next Jordan, or Kobe's the next Jordan, or this guy's the next Jordan. Right now, it's like Jason Tatum is the next Kobe, or Kyrie is the next Kobe. But like, who's the next LeBron? That oh, like shit. that doesn't exist because it can't exist because he is in a stratosphere himself. He is a well, sun while other people are planets or meteorites that rotate around something. <laughs> Nick Wright, Nick Wright from uh, it's a good Washington analogy. That's a very good. One. <laughs> he said something that's good. He, and, and again, I'm going to butcher this, but you guys get the premise. He was like, look, if we're talking about total basketball, 
at 17 years old, LeBron James was better than Michael Jordan. He was right Ooh. at 20 years old. At 20 yeah, years true. old, yeah, yeah. LeBron James was was. All right, he's like Michael Jordan was losing in the Sweet 16. LeBron James was leading a team to the NBA Finals. Right. Let's let's keep these things in perspective. Yes. When Jordan gets there and again, it, it, we can't equate it. But like, let's not doubt Jordan was losing in the Sweet 16. He won a national championship with big game. No, shout out Sam Perkins. Shout out North Carolina. Dean Dome, all that. And, and you can't compare it. But it's like, what were they doing at those ages? You're like, well, Jordan's career when he turned 28 and he was a champion until he turned 26. He's the greatest of all time. And you're like, OK, but like. At 20 years old, LeBron James was leading a team to the NBA Finals, and you did the math. And and Michael Jordan was was in the Sweet 16. Like, are we going to account that greatness for what we saw at that age? Does that go into the pot of what we're uh, of a resume that if we're going to compare? And again, I know you went to school back then. LeBron came out of high school, but it's like, bro, if you don't like LeBron, you'll never. We like act LeBron, though when we say like that. We act, touche, we act when we say, but LeBron never had to go to college. LeBron never went to college. As if the responsibility to come in the NBA at 18 years old isn't a, a high yes. responsibility as, at as all. It's like, 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 but he didn't, ha- he didn't have to go fucking <laughs> Isaiah? sit in class and bullshit. We didn't go to class. Yeah. No. <laughs> Tell me who did. I did. I did. I did. Aw. Anyways. Yeah, Chani did. Chani anyways, did. I went because there were ladies assistant. there. Ladies. Uh, anyways. Oh, the one that you Isaiah? had before, Lauren? Okay. okay. Yeah. Yes. Oh, wow. Lady, lady. Shots fired. <laughs> Shots fired out. No, hey, you said it cut. cut it Cut it out. So, <laughs> hey, Isaiah Thomas, Zeke makes a good point. He goes, think about the runway most players have to be great. They go to college. They learn. They compete. LeBron went from dominating high school. To so now given a NBA. NBA franchise and then dominating that immediately. Who taught LeBron how to be great? Like, where was that space for him to make mistakes? There is no space where LeBron does not dominate or is not elite in his career. And whether you want to say he's top five right now, he's top 10. He's top eight. Who? Right? Like, when has he never been top eight? Eight ever in twenty years. Maybe there his is first no year. Only. Maybe only it his went, first year. His second year, he was a top ten player. His second year in the league, he was a top. Maybe 10 his player. first year when he so, was eighteen years old. Yeah, I just when went he won and the high school game. By the way, I think these Carmelo motherfuckers won of the year. are no so stupid. Okay. Carmelo should. I agree with you on that too. Yeah, Carmelo should have won. Yeah, yeah. Carmelo averaged twenty points a game, was a leading scorer, and took a team to the postseason. He should have won. He should have won rookie of the year. Hey, road trippers, the hoop season is in full swing. Are you using the sleeper app for daily fantasy basketball? We are. You watch and listen to the podcast and Rich and Channing have made their sleeper picks of the week. So get some skin in the game and start playing fantasy basketball on the sleeper app. Turn your basketball knowledge into real money with the sleeper app. It's the ultimate fantasy sports app that can turn game day into payday. Just download the sleeper app and pick more or less on your favorite players. With more stats than any other fantasy app, just choose two or more of your favorite players from either pregame or live. It's as easy as that. Again, pick more or less from the predicted stats and you could win up to 100 times your money if your picks win. Download and sign up on the Sleeper app today. Use our promo code ROADTRIPPIN and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Sleeper is currently operational in over 25 states. Check out Sleeper today. Steph Curry makes you believe you can do anything, and the Curry 11s are specifically designed with ultimate bounce, grip, and stability to allow everyone to do their thing. New generations of ball players are coming up and showing the basketball world that the old rules do not apply. The future is exciting, fast, positive, and hungry. This NBA season, rock with your favorite player and rep his shoes on and off the court. The Curry 11s are perfect for both the committed and casual ballers. The UA Warp Tech makes the shoe feel like it was designed for your feet, locked in no matter what you do on the court. Stop in your tracks with dual density UA flow cushioning and traction. It's an emergency break you don't even notice. Steph's 11th signature shoe steps into the second decade of his sneaker career, pulling colorway inspiration from the wonders of a positive and modernized future on and off the court. Take these kicks with you when you leave the scrimmage and rep Under Armour wherever you go. So do your thing. Change the game. The Curry 11 Future Curry is available now at currybrand.com. 
One of the NBA's brightest budding stars, John Morant, has been out until recently this season due to issues stemming from last spring's league investigation. Morant was seen waving a gun on social media live streams, not once, but twice, in a 90-day span last spring. Here's the discussion around John Morant, the future of the Grizzlies, and League Commissioner Adam Silver's handling of the situation. Now, there's a couple of things here, and I know everyone. I think Jalen Rose, I don't know, you guys can Google what Jalen Rose said about it. I think he was 10 out of 10 because a lot of people know Jalen Rose's yeah. story. And, like, if you, he's a little bit older now. So, like, our generation knows that, like, he was hanging out in houses and cops were raiding them and he was a top five guy. And we understand, like, the Fab Five and their impact on sports culture. Like, you talk about how basketball and, and pop culture have an intersection – like Jordan, Magic, Fab Five, they're all in the same like pop culture yes. lexicon. They're all there. That's how fucking big Jalen Rose is. So he said it best, you know, from my situation, it, it, I would say this, people that kind of know and whatever. Like I remember I, there was a tweet, there was a tweet probably a couple months ago and someone says, you would never, he was like, Richard Jefferson's dad is one of the original bloods you would never know that from listening to him talk. And I actually quote tweeted it and said, because I was taught to never glorify it. I was taught to never, to never, that, that it wasn't a positive thing, that that type of lifestyle, when I moved at eight years old with my, my single mom with two other brothers on welfare, and we left South Central because it was that bad in the 80s, you know, Snowfall and NWA and all boys in the hood. Yes, that's where I was living, right? South Central LA. My mom went to Dorsey High School. My dad went to Morningside in Inglewood. I know about all of my my aunt, my aunt was shot and killed. And I have three girl nephew or our cousins that are the exact same age as me and my three brothers. So we used to hang out. Their mom was struggling with things and ended up getting shot and killed when we were like, eight no no i was probably like nine or ten when she ended up getting shot and killed right i know about all of that lifestyle and so the reason why i was never glorified is because there was nothing ever positive about it and there's nothing cool about it there's no rep about it i don't bring it up i don't talk about it because there's nothing there right i got removed from the situation and my mom went to school and worked her way up to a spot where we could leave that behind. And I understood why it was left behind because I know about people that were killed. My father was shot and killed. Now he was older, but he was just hanging out in broad daylight in an area in Compton that he had friends and grew up in. It wasn't late night at 3 a.m. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't, you know, 12 o'clock. It was still sunny out and he was shot and killed. So it's just like those areas and the things that you might want to glorify from them are really bad. And John Morant is in a space right now where I can't speak on detail because I don't know, but it just sounds like he's trying to be a part of something or not leaving something behind that he should. That's it. He should leave it behind. I don't care about street cred and rep. If you're taught the right way, so either he's trying to represent something that he shouldn't, and it's like, bro, what are you doing? Or the converse part about it is that he's not leaving something behind that he should. And hopefully this moment lets him recognize that he can talk to, maybe he needed some different influences in his life. And there's people that are reaching out to him being like, bro, we've seen this story before with too many players, like players that were better than you. Greater men have fallen to some silly shit. So that's my thing on Ja. I feel like he didn't do anything that is like irreparable. He's not going to jail. He's not a he's not a fucking criminal. He's a young kid that needs to reevaluate some decisions and the things that he is doing. And that's okay. If you've never been a 23-year-old millionaire that is in that position, it's hard for you to really speak on it. But yeah, we can lose sight very very quickly at times of reality. Uh, I think for me, it really comes down to number one, like, I hope he gets it together. And I think, to be honest, this is just me. This is not saying this as a punishment. I think him taking the rest of the season, this is no offense to everyone else on the Grizzlies. No John Morant, no Clark, no Steven Adams. Good luck, right? The, whatever you end up in the playoffs, 
the West is stacked, right? So, you know, they're not going to have a chance to win a series without those stars. I think Jaron Jackson Jr. is great, but I don't know if he's the man to man yet. So if they prove me wrong, I'll come on here and say I was wrong. But to me, you look at Ja. Ja stopped getting attention from basketball and started loving attention from the wrong things to me, right? And that attention was, you know, maybe he does have a, a drinking problem. Maybe he does have some other things that are going on in his personal life that he's not dealing with. So the attention that he was getting or giving himself wasn't coming from the work on the court, right? Like that to me is the biggest thing. You look at like Kevin Durant or Devin Booker or, or Kobe or so, Dirk Nowitzki or like some of the players that we look up to, they were getting, they were filling their their body, their soul up with the game, right? With their friends and family. And they made the main thing the main thing. And I think Jaw lost that. But losing that within a that culture, I'm not, and Richard knows this, we've lost a lot of guys to, uh, bad habits. We've lost a lot of guys to going out to, to clubs too much. But why are you going out to clubs? Oh, it's you're getting attention for being something. You're just being famous, right? Whether your team wins or loses, you're getting attention for the biggest chain or how many bottles you're ordering or how much money you have or things that you may be able to give to other people. What I want John Moran to do is take the time to really re like reevaluate himself in this situation and find that love within basketball, right? Within his family structure, within the right people that are going to challenge him to be everything that he should be. Every year, John Morant, since his first year, comes in the first month of the season, John Morant, MVP conversation, right? A long list. Three months later, he's not on there. John Morant has the ability to be an MVP in this league with his people want to love John Morant, his tenacity, his um, emotional investment into the game would have seemed like his leadership had fallen off a little bit this year, but the past years you saw it. So for me, I want him to take time off to really get himself right so that when he comes back, we can see that emotional investment into the game and the process and taking advantage of this short window that each player has playing basketball. So get yourself healthy, get, you know, move everything else off and make the main thing the main thing. The one thing, and this is the last thing I'll say, and are there, there, there's two parts to it, is one, I understand players, right? They like There are some people that have said you can be a target when you're in these spots. I don't disagree with that, but I also believe this to be true. I have played with Steph. I have played with Tim Duncan. I have played with LeBron in his prime, Jason Kidd in his prime. Channing I Fry. play with Yoga, fuck prime. Channing Fry. I play with Kyrie in his prime. You can have security. A lot of those guys never used security, but all of those guys I would say are in the same ilk of notoriety as Ja Morant. Those guys are, those. Ja Morant is not fam more famous than any of those guys that I said, not currently. N none of those guys were carrying around guns with them. So don't tell me because you're famous that you're a target. That's true. But there's been other people more famous that for some reason weren't necessarily targets that they were carrying around guns in that manner. I'm not saying that those people do not own firearms. I'm saying in that manner, carrying them around and showing them off. And we're trying to make this a, oh, he has security. It's like, no, you're not that famous. None of those yeah. guys were in that position. Like, and some of them came, we know LeBron came from one of the shittiest situations that people can come from. There's a lot of people that have come from worse situations than the one that Ja was raised in. So again, it takes us back to the point of either he's doing something and getting himself involved in situations he shouldn't, or he's not leaving things behind that he should. And it leads us to a problem place that hopefully, and I believe that he is, I have optimism and faith that he is going to do all of the right things because he's technically never really been in trouble. It's just, there's these incidences that are leading up that the trouble could be ridiculous. Right. Well, Richard, uh, one thing not to interrupt. Are, are you done? No, Sorry, I'm, I don't done. Want to interrupt. I'm done. I'm done. I will say this. 
think about every think about like Charles Barkley, right? Think about Charles, what happened Charles, with Charles been, Barkley. Charles went, been in some shit. Went to Phoenix, went to some shit. Now, one thing that I know, one thing's for sure, two things for certain. Shout out Cam Newton. Is that John Morant now will have, if he accepts it, not only the NBA that wants him to succeed, think about how many players have the opportunity to have their own shoe. Not that this is just about money, but think so about money. now Nike goes, you know what? You are not only, an, we're not only invested in you when it comes to money, we're invested in you as a human. So now, and we know this will happen. You you have you have made some bad habits. Now we need to make sure that we protect you from yourself until you've shown us differently. We can't invest this much into you and just let you go by the wayside. <laughs> that ain't happening. Mm-hmm. Now think about his endorsements. Powerade, Nike, you can't just you're not just gonna fall off with that. People are gonna make sure that you succeed if you want to succeed. And that to me is what's exciting about this next iteration you know volume two of John Moran like if him getting himself I don't I'm not gonna use the word clean because I don't know if he has a problem but I had read somewhere that he may go to rehab to really kind of figure himself out now people go to clean rehab for all types of reasons clean can be mentally yeah. awesome yeah, right clean, and then if, you know your body mood. for most athletes 99% of athletes everything is habitual so if somebody drinks every Monday if they drink a gallon of liquor every Monday at nine your body just tunes in to do that. If you're used to eating a steak before every game, you, uh, you're you not even going to consciously think about it. You're going to order a steak, whether you play it or not. Richard is now 44 years old, still takes naps. Why? Because he's been taking naps since he was 18 years old. And this is just the truth. I was taking so naps like since I was like 15 or 16. See? <laughs> and like, he it just fall into the wrong habits. And that's what I'm saying. He needs to take time away from basketball to re-break those habits to make new ones so that we can get the best version of Ja. And I'm excited yeah, scariest, about Ja vers- version yeah. two. The scariest part of the whole situation, it was like, how are there all these back-to-back incidences? There was a lack of touch of reality in my space. And we've all done stupid stuff at 23 and drunk. But to be drunk after a loss in a strip club, on your IG live, you weren't caught on somebody else's. It wasn't a boy that was recording video and someone stole it. It was you actively promoting all of these things. You, you wanted to get you, caught. Coming off. Like you wanted come, to yeah, get caught. Yeah. Coming off a report from the Washington Post that you brandished a gun. Coming off a rep- This was like days before. Days before. That's where it got scary. You're like, wait, these are all over the last couple of like weeks and days? Oh, we need a moment here. We 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 need a moment, mm-hmm. and I say that with respect. We've all, Channing, when you, when your parents you know passed away, you you need you had a moment, right? Oh yeah, there Bunch he could be dealing with shit. I when my when my father's passed away, I I've had some moments. We all need some moments. Like I fully support him. I think he's gonna be fine. That because that's what I want Look- to believe. Summer League is always a chance to catch up with the league's players, coaches, and front office executives in person. Richard bumped into his old coach, Greg Popovich, while we were all in Vegas this past summer. And here's what Rich had to say about how Pop would handle grooming the league's number one overall pick and generational talent, Victor Wimbanyama. I was waiting for you in the hallway. Mm-hmm. And I was waiting. <laughs> and I was waiting. Mm-hmm. And then I found out that you were talking to Pop, the one and only. The one and only. What did Greg Popovich have to say to you? Well, this is the thing. Like, Pop is still like he's Pop is Pop. He's still like your grandfather. So, like, I'm kind of like ducking through the wind quick, trying to go, and all of a sudden, grabs me. I was like, "Oh, hey, Pop!" And I was like, "Hey!" And gives me a hug. I'm like, "Hey, man, congratulations!" You know, on the contract. Yep. I'm like, "I'm five so, years, five wild. years," and I'm like, "I'm so glad that kid is with you." I, the two years that I had with Pop were two of the most pivotal of my entire career. Maybe my entire basketball life. It didn't go great. <laughs> but oh, it go great on a scale of one to ten. Ah, for you know, there's scales. Yeah. But I, I, I say this is that they taught me how to be a better spot up shooter. He taught me the the I won't say taught me, but just he he stayed on me about the about the staying in shape and keeping all these things that you know Pop and Spurs have always been ahead of it. And I shot forty percent because of Chip England because of Pop because they taught me so many things and that extended my career. So I am forever grateful to that man. And when we were talking about Wimby, he's like, look, look, 
Wimby's great. He's talented. It's going to take time. Because, again, you're comparing him to Tim Duncan. You're comparing mm-hmm. him to David Robinson. David Robinson went to school in the Naval Academy for four years. Then he did, like, a year of military service. By the time David Robinson showed up, he was, like, 24 years old or 23 years old. Yeah. Tim Duncan went to school for four years. Yeah. Had David Robinson and a monster squad around him. Fair. And it was like Tim Duncan was rookie of the year and first team all NBA. But he was 22 years old. So to compare all of these guys to, or to compare Wimby to them who were three, four years older than him, you know, I, I think I'm glad that Pop is there for his development. Yeah. Right. Yeah. However long Pop decides to coach, I know this. If the kid is going to make it, he's in the best situation possible. And I think that's great. Wow. Yeah, that's well said. Mm-hmm. And I don't think anyone would doubt that. Mm-mm. Um, obviously we're, we're talking about this having coming off his debut where he finished with nine points, eight boards, three assists, five blocks, but just shot the ball two of 13 from the field. Um, I don't care about the two for 13. I, yeah, I, I was going to say, I, we also kind of talked about it. You weren't here at the end of the other episode with Channing when it comes to just like the purpose of summer league. Right. But for someone like him, does that change? No, no, no. The, and that's the thing about being a player, especially it doesn't matter if you're the number one pick or if you're a guy trying to make the team. It's all a very similar process. Your head is spinning, mm-hmm. right? Like he just left Euro League where he's been with his team. He's been in France. There's no language barrier. There's not, you know what I'm saying? Like it's all, he left his team. It's like, imagine leaving your college team and which a lot of these guys do and then playing basketball a couple weeks later, not like, you know, NCAA has been done since March you know, early April. So these guys have, you know, whatever, a lot of time. He's been playing, 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 and then boom, straight here. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these guys have had months shooting NBA threes, months understanding what they're going to do, getting ready for the draft, getting ready for the draft, working two, three hours a day. He just finished and came. So I, I look at the things, his passing, his shot blocking. Those are the things that I look at that you can't teach. Mm-hmm. And, and Pop, you know, again, very, very briefly, he was like, man, I love his passing. You know, blah, blah, blah. I think he's going to be a really good player. You know, but Pop is always a downplay guy. Yeah. And he's always a patience guy. Like, understand Tony Parker. Look at Tony Parker came into this league. They almost traded Tony Parker. They almost traded him for Jason Kidd. Like, my second year, Jason decided to stay in, in Jersey. But it's just like Pop is the master of building it brick by brick. He's not like, we're going to turn you into a 20-point game score. We're going to make – no, he's like, no, let's give you the bases. Let, I want you to focus on defense. I don't care. This is what Pop will say. I don't give a fuck how many points you score. Mm-hmm. I want to know how many rebounds. I want to know how many blocks. It was the same thing with Kawhi. Kawhi showed up, was just a defender. And then slowly but surely he built Kawhi up with the work that Kawhi put in. And then Kawhi turns into that guy. But Kawhi was the 14th pick. Yeah. Kawhi was all of these things. He wasn't like top five pick. And, no, and it was gradual. It was gradual. I remember Pop, one of my stories about Kawhi. Kawhi's rookie year. Kawhi comes in. It was like, you know, game eight. Kawhi comes in, shoots a couple of pull-ups, which is his staple shot now. Like in transition pull-up. Another one. Pull. Pop takes him out of the game. Halftime come. Pop's like, what the fuck? That bullshit pull you think if you think you're going to make an offensive impact on this team, I want you to defend and I want you to rebound at a high level, right? Yeah. And then didn't play him the second half. This is Kawhi's rookie sending a message. And again, Pop will bring you into his offense like, hey, look, I love you, but this is what we're going to do. Yeah. So what I'm saying, the, the, the whole point of this is that Pop can take a great player and be like, no, 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 no. We're going to do this by basics. You got English class, you got math class, you got Spanish class, you got science. Mm-hmm. We're going to focus on math today. This yeah. is what we're doing. This is all you're going to do. Zach Collins literally shared this exact story ah, from Pop. Yeah, that's who he is. <laughs> Pop ain't. He like told him that he wasn't allowed to shoot pick. He wasn't allowed to shoot pick and pop threes anymore. Yeah, he's like absolutely. He's like he went three, I believe, of like twenty one or something. He said he was he like a stretch of like a terrible shooting. Um, and Pop basically in front of everyone, like kind of was just like, "You're not fucking shooting these pick and pop threes anymore. You're done." Blah blah blah. Um, but then Channing made that point. I just from a standpoint of like, he kind of says that to you because he knows that you'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. Like in a sense, um, what were you more surprised about pops extension or Wimby's debut? Honestly, neither. You're not surprised by the five years. No, because I think pop that he like wants to be around. Well, look at what the fuck he got. Fair. Right. Fair. But as if he didn't or has not already had this incredible, I'd I'd be curious. So you think it's the only reason why? 
No, I don't think it's the only reason why. Okay. But I'd be curious if the if the Spurs got the the the, the sixth pick, would he be? Yeah, that's would my, he that's be my fine, point. fine? But I think this again. This is old sports. Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. I think is Vic D'Amato. Some somebody will correct me. But he was an old like legend trainer. Let's call him Pop. Right. Yeah. He was that guy. Like he was one of the greatest trainers of all time. Mm-hmm. He found Mike Tyson at 19 and was like, you're going to be my greatest achievement and just got Mike. And one of the reasons why Mike started to struggle is because Vic passed away. He was very, very old. But my point is sometimes these once in a generation, these once in a lifetime guys can give you purpose. Mm-hmm. They can give you a reason. They can give you that energy to be like, hey, look, I might not be with him for his whole career, but if my last fucking stretch Mm-hmm. is to give this kid the base that's going to allow him to be great, then, oh, that's purpose every day. Yeah. That's pre- you know what I'm saying? Because a guy like Pop, who is the San Antonio Spurs, there is no San Antonio Spurs without Pop. So you imagine that at some point in time, he might go to the Pat Riley role and find his Eric Spolstra. But he wants to leave them. Like Eric Spolstra didn't take over a rebuild. He took over a very good team. So I just think, I, I don't know. When I look at it, I'm like, if Pop can get this base – then move on and then make sure that the thing that he spent the last 20 plus years building building is in a great place Then he's done. His legacy is, is flawless. It's perfect. Everything is right. There you have it. Road trippers, all the best of 2023. And we appreciate you staying locked in for over 300 episodes. Happy holidays. We wouldn't be where we are without you, our amazing community of listeners. We'll see you back here next week as we react to the NBA's four Christmas Day games and put a bow on 2023. It's another edition of Road Trip.